Congressman Ro Khanna is with us for the first hour, and we'll be taking your calls. And then in the second hour, I want to get into um, this uh, chaplain who was fired and what it, what and there's a much larger picture here that has to do with this whole thing. We will talk about uh, Matthew 25 and whatnot in the second and third hour of our program. But first, Congressman Ro Khanna is with us. He represents the 17th District of California. He is the vice chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. And his website, Khanna, K-H-A-N-N-A dot house dot gov. And you can tweet him at Rep Ro Khanna, R-E-P-R-O-K-H-A-N-N-A. Congressman, welcome back. Great to be back on. And, uh, you know, I just came back from the House floor where we voted uh, against the firing of this chaplain. And uh -huh. uh, the Steny Hoyer, our minority whip, asked uh, two questions which we haven't gotten an answer to. Uh, first, whether the speaker even has the authority to fire the chaplain, because it's supposed to be someone elected by the members. And uh, we got no answer. And then uh, what the grounds were, which, uh, you know, we've heard rumors that uh, it's just because he talked about ta the tax bill uh, it being uh, something that should help everyone in line uh, with Christian uh, thinking. So it's, uh, it's really been uh, on the minds of a lot of members and uh, generated quite a lot of outrage. Yeah, I think this was the uh, magic line from his prayer. I mean, he starts out with God of the universe, we give you thanks, and, you know, ends with, may your blessings, O God, be with these legislators. But in the middle, he says, as legislation on taxes continues to be debated this week and next, may all members be mindful that the institutions and structures of our great nation guarantee the opportunities that have allowed some to achieve great success while others continue to struggle. Right. Which is, it, it's amazing that that would be inappropriate because you've had the Republicans pretend that their tax plan actually does help everyone. Yep. So all he's saying, he's not even criticizing their plan, he's just saying, uh, let that be the goal. Uh, and so to, to now uh, to not even have that as a, a goal any longer is uh, uh, amazing. Yeah, it's pretty breathtaking. Um, before we get started, before we pick up calls, we've got a bunch of people already on the line who would like to speak with you. Uh, are there any issues in front of you that you wanted to be sure to get into the program or any, any, any particular thing you'd like to talk about? Maybe two things in, in particular. Uh, Leader Pelosi has asked me to work on an Internet Bill of Rights. So one of the very disappointing aspects of Zuckerberg's testimony in uh, Congress a couple of weeks ago was uh, what I thought was a lack of knowledge or willingness to push him from senators and, and Congress members. And he was skating by in part because uh, we didn't have uh, sufficient knowledge about uh, the type of protections consumers need. But Europe, as you know, Tom has the GDPR, which is a, uh, a law to protect consumers so that you can know your data, uh, much like you know your health care data or you know your financial data. Uh, I'm not saying we need an exact replica of the GDPR, but it's long overdue for us to have uh, an Internet Bill of Rights where people have access to their data, can delete their data, get notified during breaches, uh, and where you have the principle that an individual owns their own data. So I have been... Uh, uh, working on that and also working on sort of having pro-competition platforms so that we don't have uh, concentration. And then the second thing I'll mention is the continuing work. I was in uh, Beckley, West Virginia a couple days ago at West Virginia Tech, uh, a extraordinary effort uh, to go to rural West Virginia and uh, have an institute of technology there. Uh, and a number of young folks, I met 60 percent of those kids are the first in their uh, families to go to college. Many come from coal mining families. It was just really interesting to hear their perspective about uh, how the economy is changing and what they would like to see of our government in terms of the investment in education, apprenticeships, uh, jobs, uh, to give them an economic opportunity. Uh, and of course, we're not doing enough, I think, in terms of those kind of investments. Uh, and that's part of the reason that they're disillusioned. And just just a, a data point for you on the internet stuff. Uh, I've I, I, for years I have used a virtual private network, a VPN service. Actually, there's two of them that I use um, to basically, you know, if I'm traveling, of course, so that I can so that whoever owns the network I'm on, the hotel or airline or whatever it may be, can't read what I'm doing, can't can't grab my passwords and and read my emails and stuff. But I also use it at home. Uh, and, uh, you know, to keep my information private from Comcast, frankly. And I discovered th three or four days ago, the day that net neutrality officially expired, 
that uh, when I try to use my VPN now, no data will go through my internet service provider. So I think that they're blocking VPN services now, which is uh, Comcast, uh, the Comcast is my internet pr service provider. And it's, it's intermittent. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm, I'm not certain that it's Comcast. But if it is, you know, as a ISP, they're in a position where they can literally read everything I do. They can even know when my mouse is moving around on the screen before I click something. And with a VPN, they don't have access to that information. And, and uh, that concerns me. Yeah, well, Tom, your thoughtful articulation of that is uh, put to it having more knowledge about how the Internet works that probably 99% of members are staff in, in this body. And I think that that's, that was the challenge, that people didn't push the Internet service providers or Zuckerberg on issues like that. Or issues, for example, if you're browsing and you use Firefox, well, Firefox uh, at least protects you and doesn't have cookies, and so uh, these tech companies can't get your information versus if you use Safari, and certainly uh, VPN pr protects you, and I uh, think anything part of the Internet Bill of Rights needs to make sure the Internet service providers allow the use of that and don't restrict the use of that because the Internet service providers want this data as well, the personal information, as they recognize the monetized value of that. So. I appreciate you bringing it up, and I'll have uh, our team make sure that we include something on that in, uh, in the principles we're drafting. That's great. I think it's pretty vital stuff.